How many fucking times do you need to be told to work hard? You have to work your fucking face off. You are a lazy fucking loser. Go to Instagram! You're so stupid! Do the hard work, especially when you don't feel like it. First of all, oh fuck. First of all, chill. Okay, I'm right fucking here. Relax. Second of all, do we really need to hear this shit another time from another bald guy? I've heard this shit at least 55 times within the last fucking month. What is it that we don't understand the premise? Is that what's being assumed here? Maybe it's just what TikTok or Instagram's algorithm is feeding me to exploit my insecurities and far bad revenue, but I'm constantly seeing this self improvement red pill nonsense on my feed and I used to think that these gurus were right. And what's becoming quite disappointing with all these videos is that there's no originality. It's always wake up early, go to the gym, take cold showers, work on a business, and the John 316 of all these fucking alpha males, do what you don't want to do. And, you know, for some time, I really thought that to succeed in any realm of endeavor, this shit was the only way. And I was like, fuck, man, because the person you're describing to be successful is just not who I am. You know, I didn't like doing what I hate when I was younger. I know, very fucking surprising. I came home to watch iCarly, not start a fucking business. Even though it's not who I am, I knew I could be disciplined. So my monkey brain was like, yo, these guys got the baddies. They got a bag. Let me just do what they say. I, I did the cold showers. I had the little screen time. I journaled. I was grinding every day trying to become one of these fucking e-com scammers to realize my destiny as someone who wears Miami clothes, smokes cigars, and fucks tens every day because that's just what a real man is supposed to do or some shit. But then I'll have a day where I'm just fucking useless. Like, I'll be scrolling on my phone, jerking off, just doing fuck all. It's not a surprise that burning out is the outcome of following these gurus advice you can say i was disciplined but i was also miserable and i was accomplishing things but i was never really grateful for where i am in life and what does it matter at that point and what's worse than all of that is that if i say had one unproductive day by numerous definitions i would feel like shit and i would actually look in the mirror and say wow you're a bitch and you need to get your shit together just because i had one off day is there fucking something off with me, man? Like, I'm a person that wants things, but to get those things, am I destined to be stuck in this miserable cycle of doing what I hate and then burning out on repeat and then just eventually dying off? Is that actually the way that we're supposed to do things? Or, or are we being sold a scam? Is it just a way for these people to just make us feel fundamentally broken so that they can just push us through a marketing funnel and just sells a course for $297 and a 90% discount, have the 16 year old high school dropout fix us? Let's, let's be empirical about this. I know when things get philosophical, existential, logic, reason, and general usefulness of a video like this kind of goes to shit. So let's look at what people said on their deathbeds to gauge what a good life is relative to regret. So unsurprisingly, the most popular thing said on the deathbed is, I wish I didn't work so hard. And the second is, I wish I let myself be happier. And number three would be, I wish I lived a life true to myself, not what others expected of me. These regrets imply that everyone tries to work hard and then we can see that this isn't really the way to be fulfilled. Because if it was, you would probably see like, oh, I wish I grinded harder. I wish I woke up at 4 a.m. every day and did drop shipping all day, took more ice baths and fucked more Swedish women. It's pretty obvious how this lifestyle can lead to regret, right? Because when you're disciplined and stoic, you're trying to limit the fluctuations in your emotions. And yes, maybe the suffering and the shitty parts of life is reduced, but you also don't get to experience the pleasures and like the good shit about life. If you're always disciplined trying to be a fucking monk all the time, you're in a constant state of denial, never operating on desire. Cause that's kind of what discipline is, right? Trying to not do the things that you want to do and do the things that you don't want to do. Discipline is good if you need to practice Ramadan or if your goal is to quit smoking. It's not good for deciding how to live your life. So then what is the alternative? Because we still have goals, shit that we have to do, right? Can't just sit around jacking off and smoking weed. The question is how do we do the things that we don't want to do without discipline or just forcing ourselves through it? You know this guy? Did you know that this man, Albert fucking Einstein, was a shitty student?
Like all of us, he hated math all throughout school, but after reading a geometry textbook, he helped confirm the existence of atoms. Do you think that while he was nerding out doing his fucking crazy shit, he was just practicing discipline, trying to be an alpha male? Fuck no. So then what happened here? Because apparently he was a fucking dumbass and he became a genius, the genius. And it was the book, right? Whatever the fuck was in there, challenged his assumptions about what math and physics was previously and broadened his perspective on the field in general. And after, he didn't have to force himself to study or to, you know, create new theories or whatever the fuck. It was something that he loved doing because whatever he thought this was before was erased. Obviously, I would never touch this shit because it's for fucking nerds, right? But you know what I'm saying? Like, this worked out for him, apparently. So, for example, right? I used to fucking hate reading. Like I said before, I was really into the discipline, self-help, red pill nonsense. So, I was reading a lot of these, like, self help books and for every book that i would read i would have to literally force my way through like every word of the page and when i get through like 30 percent of the book i would just throw it to the side and never look at it again and i thought to myself did i just fundamentally despise books like was i just like a person who was incapable of enjoying reading you know that doesn't really make sense right because i was fine with browsing reddit or like fucking reading text messages why did i particularly not like books did it have some kind of traumatic event that caused me to hate words on a piece of paper obviously not the issue was that i assumed that reading was a fucking learning activity or some shit that nerds did back in the day in high school to like avoid talking to girls and shit but after after i picked up a spy novel everything changed i'm not it's not that dramatic but like I started to not have to force myself through it. It became a form of entertainment. Like, yeah, all my friends call me gay, but I was actually, like, inspired, and I was, like, interested in reading, and I enjoyed myself. My perspective in general of reading was broadened, and my assumptions were definitely challenged. I mean, I thought uh, this shit was for nerds only, right? Think back to when you were, like, a little shit. You would look at an onion or some broccoli as if it was literal human feces. You only ate it because otherwise you couldn't watch Johnny Tess or fucking Drake and Josh. But now, vegetables are just a part of your normal diet. You don't complain about eating vegetables. Well, maybe you do, but that's because you're still a child. <laughs> Point is, the assumptions that you made as a child, which is, oh, all this shit does is make my mouth taste bad, changed into whatever it is now that allows you to think of vegetables as something that is not just shit. So just a slight alteration in your perspective allowed something that you used to hate become second nature. And to some people, something that you actually enjoy. Take anything you're currently force yourself to do. Schoolwork, your job, your wife. That's tough! Ask yourself this question. Is it possible that I'm making an unfounded assumption on this task that is making my perspective on it narrower? And in translation, making me hate it. A very common one would be like, okay, I hate my homework, but what, do you hate the act of solving a problem? Do you hate writing? Do you hate handing in deliverables? Like, what do you actually hate? Because the way that you look at something is gonna directly determine what you feel about it. If you're solving a math problem and you're looking at this question like, wow, this is so stupid, why am I doing math? It's never gonna help me in life. You're never gonna be enthusiastic or creative when you solve the problem. But that's obviously not how mathematicians, physicians, not physicians, physicists or finance people look at math, right? It's all about the perspective. It's like very possible. You don't hate your job. You don't hate fucking your wife. You don't hate schoolwork. You just don't know how to look at it yet. And I know it's kind of hard to be like, okay, I'm now going to like change the way I look at something. I know that's fucking difficult, right? But you know what's more difficult? Force yourself to do half of the shit that you do. Force yourself to go to the gym. Force yourself to do homework. If you broke it down, discipline is good for physical shit. Discipline is good for increasing your max bench. Great to sit in a nice bath. If you're a writer, it's good to pound out 8,000 words. But what it's not good for is if you're a writer to discipline yourself to be creative. You can try though. You can say, all right, I'm gonna sit here and not get up until I put down 8,000 words and write really, really hard. But would it really matter if what you wrote is fucking dog shit? No. You can't will inspiration, problem solving, or creativity. That's why these guys who sell fucking course will just call you lazy and not doing the work. More hard. Because that's their crutch. Let me play a guru, okay? I I'm, I'm better than you in all aspects. I run 17 dropshipping stores and I'm your mentor, okay? So I'm gonna instruct you to create an Excel sheet of a thousand different products that you found on Alibaba. That's gonna take you days. But I'm gonna use that as a reason of why your dropshipping store is not doing well. 
even though the actual reason why it's not doing well is because you lack their creativity to create a brand. You're shit at negotiating with suppliers. You can't like create a good user experience on your website. All these different things I'm not even gonna mention because I can't use that as an excuse to keep you in my course. What I can use is the fact that you're a lazy piece of shit because you can change that. You can will that, but you can't will everything else. But then let's turn it around. Hey, yo. Right? Let's say I never got a dropshipping guru to, to hold my hand while I start my e-commerce brand. I was just inspired by walking through the woods and I saw the possibility for a product to like, I don't know, collect like tree syrup. Then the whole user experience is going to start forming in my own head and the creativity is just going to snowball. But that's not me just like, oh, I want to get rich. So I'm going to hire a guru to help me like, you know, start a dropshipping store. It's like, I am inspired. I want to do this. I'm enjoying the grind. If you spent a fucking fraction of effort from forcing yourself to do what you dread on reframing your assumptions about the task to perhaps enjoy the vegetables, enjoy reading, enjoy writing, you not only tap into inspiration and creativity, but you wouldn't be so fucking miserable. The people that we look up to, like Elon Musk, JK Rowling, Albert Einstein, don't require discipline. They do what they do because that's their baseline enjoyment. And that's a pretty obvious statement, right? It wouldn't be absurd to say that Elon Musk likes to build shit and JK Rowling likes to write shit. The things that are novel and noteworthy, like what these people have done, cannot just be forced and willed through. Bro, honestly, it comes down to do what you fucking want to do. And if you don't enjoy what you need to do, maybe it's time to make it so. You're not fixed. You're not predetermined with a set of things that you enjoy and do not enjoy. Life is not a curse to just be on a cycle of doing the shit that you hate. Open your fucking mind and maybe see that math is actually pretty sick and reading is not gay. Broaden your perspective and welcome new ones. I mean, you're alive. Isn't that enough to try? That's it though, end the video.